Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. And this time we're going to talk about a pretty important subject, and that has to do with networking in general in regards to which is better, Wi-Fi or wired Ethernet, and which you should be using in your home or business. This is actually a cable modem, but we're gonna make like it's a cable modem router Wi-Fi box combo. You're probably t paying rent on this device and it's doing everything. You've, they, they installed it, it's hooked up to your cable coming in from outside, it's giving you a Wi-Fi signal and you you might be using it for like literally everything. Watching your TV, you know, playing Xbox games, things like that. But I have to tell you, you're really kind of doing yourself a disservice because there's a few things about Wi-Fi you should know. Wi-Fi is a very convenient technology. It eliminates the need for cabling. So that's its biggest advantage. It's mobile. But at the same time, every pro has a con, and in this case, several cons. Wi-Fi is susceptible to electromagnetic interference in the air all around you. You can't see it, but if you had glasses you could put on that could show you all of the interference around you, you would, you would see it everywhere. And so every bit of electromagnetic interference is going to interfere with your Wi-Fi signal one way or the other. And it tends to show up in slower speeds. It tends to show up in shorter range or maybe a non-working internet connection as well. So Wi-Fi is interfered with by your neighbor's router in the house across from you. Wi-Fi can be interfered with a badly behaved microwave oven. I have personally witnessed a just a, a, mic, a standard microwave that as soon as you turn it on, the entire Wi-Fi network came to a screeching halt until it turned right back off. So uh, baby monitors are another potential source of, in, uh, of interference. Now, over time, they, the FCC, or Federal Communications Commission, has opened up additional frequency bands, which have helped alleviate the problem of congested channels because the older 2.4 gigahertz original Wi-Fi, that's that that would be like 802.11 B, G, N, etc. That uh, really only had three distinct channels: one, six, and eleven. In reality, it, it has so-called eleven channels, but channel ten, for example, is sharing bandwidth with channel six and eleven, or more with eleven. But you get the idea; they're all sharing bandwidth with each other. So there's really only three distinct channels, 1, 6, and 11. So given that you've only got 1, 6, and 11 to work with, one of those channels is likely to be not free. And especially if you're in an apartment situation, that's even worse because you've got lots of Wi-Fi routers around. So everyone's competing for the same airtime. And this shows up in delays, buffering on your favorite Netflix show, uh, it can result in you getting uh, killed real fast in the battlefield if you're Xboxing. So, uh, and that has to, so it's not just the interference, it's also packet latency. See, Wi Fi, uh, in order to work, has to encode a signal and transmit it, and it adds additional overhead to that data packet. And it has to do that for each and every data packet. And if you get a bad packet, it has to retransmit that same packet again with that additional overhead. So they opened up the five gigahertz spectrum to help alleviate this congestion. The problem with five gigahertz is although it's freer air, it has problems with range and object penetration. So for example, the drywall behind me. As long as you're only penetrating drywall, you can use five gigahertz pretty easily through several uh, drywall rooms. If this wall behind me was concrete, you're not going to be getting through that wall with five gigahertz. If it has steel siding, you're not going to be getting too far past it either. So five gigahertz, while higher bandwidth and also less prone to interference, comes with range and object penetration penalties. So you fixed one problem and you got another problem. So how do you defeat all this stuff? How do you defeat these, this Wi-Fi problem? Well, you can't completely defeat the problem. The reason is simple, smartphones. Smartphones, there's nowhere to plug in a ethernet cord into a smartphone, so you don't have a choice. That's gotta be on Wi-Fi. Certain devices like laptop computers, tablets, may not have an ethernet port. Again, you're in the same boat. You're gonna have to use Wi-Fi. But there are certain devices in your home that you should be sure are wired if you can get away with it. Uh, smart TVs, 
gaming consoles especially, computers that need high reliability, let's say you're doing a lot of file downloading or you're gaming on your PC, I that would be like gaming on an Xbox, you need low latency. You, you want to get rid of the Wi-Fi packet latency and you want to get rid of all the factors that can interfere or disrupt your signal. 